Adventurers, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. It is time to talk about some more weird and wacky stuff. I am your host, Tom, or Robots as usual, and I am back with my co-host, the Lotus of the Doom. Welcome back, buddy. How's it going? Things are things are good. Things are good. Gonna get weird with Dwemer this time. Yes, yes. Okay, so the top you can't talk weird and wacky stuff without talking about Dwemer because of course Dwemer are just kind of weird and wacky. We we don't get to interact with them in any of the games because we get the remnants of the Dwemer. So of course we get the you know stories and well the there is a automatons Dwemer. there is a Dwemer but we don't get Dwemer as in like plural right we don't yeah. get to like walk among them sure, right you know we that get kind some of thing. you know flashback interactions with spirits specifically right. in ESO a decent bit and there's everybody's favorite chubby spider Dwemer <laughs> Yagram Bagar. So. Right, right. I've even read stuff where people assume that like, oh, all Dwemer were like that. And it's like, no, 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 no. Just <laughs> just this one is like a chubby spider looking dude. No, I was going to say, like, that's like saying all of the human race looks exactly the same. It's right. like, well, there's or, some variety with us. <laughs> sure. Or like meeting somebody in a wheelchair and being like, all humans ride around in wheelchairs. You know, exactly. Mm. Or all, all humans are exactly six feet tall, which we know is not true. <laughs> right, right. So Okay, so there are more or less legitimate theories for anything having to do with anything, right? And especially when it comes to the Elder Scrolls. And in today's episode, we're going to dig into some of the weirder and wackier theories about the disappearance of the Dwemer. And some of the theories stick a little bit more to the lore and the things that are revealed. And we're not given a whole lot, but... There are some that stick a little bit more firmly to what is revealed specifically in Morrowind or in ESO and some of the books and, and the things. And um, somebody like Aramithius, who we've had on our show before, written in Uncertainty, his his podcast, um, would stick to uh, specific references and, and really dig into the nitty gritty of that stuff. And I'm going to reference something that he posted when I talked about this on Twitter earlier today, because I think he's got some really cool ideas here. But instead of going into depth about say his theory because i think this is a thing that he would do really really well and i we should actually bring him on to go into depth about specifically his theory and some of the little bit more legitimate theories what i wanted to do because this is in our weird and wacky section that we've been doing is talk about some of the more ridiculous theories or at least less substantiated theories that may still be possible because those yeah. are fun too right and i think a good way to end this one which i think might be kind of interesting is to close out whether it's wacky or if it's actually something you, you're grunt we should end uh tonight after we get into some of the weirder ones uh -huh. with which one do you think is the well, actual case be actually, it weird he, or be it grounded why don't we why don't we rate it on on a on a wacky scale okay okay All we're right. gonna go through each of these and and i think i'm gonna put them in the order that i think they're gonna get progressively wackier or at least weirder Got at it. least more extreme let me say that <laughs> more extreme they're gonna become more extreme and we're gonna give them a rating of how likely these are to actually be possible We'll give them like a possibility scale of like one to ten. Okay. Right. So like a one would be like, no, there's no way this is possible this is at all. This is a pipe dream. This person must have been, uh, you know, smoking the skooma. There's like, there's nothing going on here that's ever going to make sense. This is, there's no way at all. And a ten would be like, even if they're not actually referencing anything specifically in game, this this really could work like there's there's something here that would actually work with just the way we understand elder scrolls stories to work or we understand you know previous things in the world and the pieces kind of fit together does that make yeah. sense um, i got you so that, that that could be like a nine it just doesn't have any hard references we would need some hard references to make it a 10. does that make sense so yeah. okay but before we get into that and normally i save this stuff for the middle of the show i have a really big announcement because i'm super excited about this the Patreon for the Elder Scrolls Lorecast has been upgraded with merchandise. And this is something that I have done because uh, I put out some polls out there on the Discord, put out a poll out there on the Twitter, and I basically threw this out there and I said, hey guys, if I was to add merchandise to the Patreon for no extra cost, 
If I just decided, you know what, for the current tiers that are out there, for the prices that they currently are, if I decided to just add on, to just tack on some merch, like stickers and t-shirts, just throw those on there as a bonus. What do you guys think about that? Would you, would you upgrade maybe or sign up for something? And a lot of people were like, heck yeah. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Why not? <laughs> you guys have been awesome. You've been supporting the show. And you know what? If you are currently somebody who is su supporting the show, guess what? You are now going to get, if you are tier three, you are now going to start getting stickers. If you're tier four or higher, you're going to start getting t-shirts. And if you want to start getting stickers or t-shirts, if you sign up at those tiers, you will start getting t-shirts and stickers. And so I want to show this off. If you're on, if, you, if you're currently in, in the live stream or you're watching the video, check this out. This image right here is the first and we're starting with Daedra. And I'm going to go through them alphabetically. So every three months, if you stick with whatever tier you're at or higher, then you will be able to get whatever, either the sticker or the T-shirt for the Daedra that is currently in order of the, the one that you would be getting. So we're, we're starting with Azura. So, right, of course, we have a, a moon and a star. And um, if you look at here, just look at my shirt. So I've got the Skyrim shirt on right now. It's the, the, you know, the dragon symbol from Skyrim and my shirt's just black. It's the, it's a black symbol on a, on a red shirt. So I went one better than that. So all of these are the Daedric symbols stylized with some sort of texture or art behind the symbol. So this one is the moon and the star for Azura, but there's an eclipse behind it in like reds and blacks with a moon and a sun behind it, behind the symbol. And then within the symbol is the Elder Scrolls lore cast, very small inside the symbol. And there's some others too. I'm going to pull up some of the other artwork. And, and, and I really don't think that the t-shirt mock-ups really do the art what right. So I'm going to pull up uh, Boethia. This is the next one on here. And I'm gonna make this real nice and big. Uh, where did it go? Image, image. I gotta, re I gotta reset the transformation. Um, oh, it's not coming up right. Let me pull up the t-shirt one then. I think it's because it's a PNG. It's just not pulling it up. So here's the t-shirt version of it. And Boethia is, um, oops, I'm moving us and not it, is the, the fist with the snake. Classic snake punch. Yeah, snake the snake punch. Um, <laughs> but the texture on here is like a, like a, um, like a, like an aged wood, but it's like a, a gray wood with like white in it. And it's even got some like iron and aged iron and metal inside of it. And I wish you guys could see the high res details of this stuff, but it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. 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 Awesome looking stuff. I, I just love these. Um, here, I'll show another one. This is clavicus vial. This one I think is really, really great because it's the clavicus vial mask symbol. But the, and I wish this was in higher res on these pictures for the stream, but you can see behind it, there are gold septums because Clavis, Clavicus oh, Vile okay. is, is always working I... out deals. But yeah, those are actual septums. You can see the symbols like behind there. And all of these, if you go to the the Patreon, the, the high definition um, actual images are in the post on the patreon so if you go to patreon.com slash elder scrolls lorecast look at the the most recent post you'll see the t-shirt ones but then the high definition actual ones if you click on them they'll get real big on your screen you can actually see the the definition that's in those so it's i don't know i'm super proud of it the community has been really big on these too i think they're really really cool they're the kinds of t-shirts that i'm like i wish they would make these so i put them out there i think you guys are gonna be excited about them as well but um it's just my way of saying thank you for being loyal patrons it's just an extra bonus to those people who are already signed up for no extra cost and if you want to upgrade or sign up and get t-shirts now it's just part of the patreon also these will never go up on the store so the only way you can actually get these shirts is by being patrons so once they once they work their way through the patreon then we're going to move on to the rest of the daedric princes and once we work through all of those then they're not going to cycle back through we'll go on to other t-shirts so once these cycle out then they'll be gone these will, will be limited edition and we'll move on to other t-shirts with other symbols or other characters or whatever so i just wanted to put that out there on the front uh, at the beginning of this because i'm super excited about it and we've already had some people upgrade and stuff and i can't wait to actually the more i talk about it the more i, I need to just get my own i'm gonna have to just <laughs> buy my own and get them shipped here and uh man
I really like the Azura one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's my favorite so far. Is that your favorite? Um, Here, I'll show the last one. There's, oh, dude, I have to show you this one. Look at that. So, Hermaeus Mora, the eye. Oh, yes. With the tentacles. The 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 texture underneath there, do you know what that is? It's the mist, right, uh, when you're reading a black book. It's it's the actual it's, it's an the, actual screenshot from the game. Yep, I actually know exactly which screenshot that is. Just, but I love how you managed to sync the eye with the eye. Yeah, in the like the, the, that just looks really cool. The way Hermaeus Moore's little orby eye hovering above uh, the black book in that screenshot because that's what it is. It's like the raised bit above where the black book would be. If you look up, he materializes in front of it. Yeah. Um, I love how the, his like weird little like double pupil connected eyeball thing fit right into the actual flag that you used like that, the flag symbol from his banner. Yep. It, it looks so cool. Synced right up like that. Also speaking of the banner, which is there, man, I really hope they put more of those in the Bethesda store. Cause they oh, yeah. get a couple of the Daedric princes slighted. What? Slighted. <laughs> no Hermes Mora. What? What? Oh, no Hermie. I mean, we're no actually going to Hermie's going to come up again as we talk about the Dwemer. A uh, little hint here, but yeah, I, man, I got a nice high res picture of Hermie, and then fit it in there inside the artwork for Hermes Banner with the eye, the double pupil eye inside the eye, and then the green inside the tentacles. I was like, oh my gosh. When I figured out how to fit that design inside the other design, I was like, oh, this is so good. Lotus is going to love this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, super excited about those. Okay. I'm just, I'll stop wasting your time t- gushing about t-shirts that I designed, but I just, I'm not a designer. So when I do something that I actually like, I'm very excited about it because I'm not a designer. Um, <laughs> but it's just one of those things that, you know, you, you work on this stuff for years and eventually you get to the point where you're just like, oh, okay, this is good. I did a, I did a good thing. Yay. Um, but all right, let's talk about, let's talk about Dwemer. So I mentioned Aramithius and Aramithius has a, an actual legitimate concept here, and I'm just going to share the idea of the concept, and maybe we'll have him come on in the future and talk about this. Maybe this is something he can talk about on his show, but I just want to throw out what an actual legitimate idea sounds like. And he writes, my money is on them trying to become the skin of the Numidium, nicely, nicely laid out in the final report to Trebonus in the Imperial Library. They did, however, reduce themselves to ashes in the process, as shown in Bam's Ashend, and didn't get every Dwemer soul. Um, and as referenced, Yagi and ghosts. Um, I always took the ghosts to be, uh, wait, 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 he continued this, hold on. And then he continued this and said, as a real result of not getting every soul, they probably couldn't s- mash all the bits back together to get to godhood and Kagranak was a little rushed at the battle of red mountain so he probably failed and killed them all instead so th- the concept of the numidian was to create a god a living god and the idea here would be that they would then take part in becoming that living god by becoming the skin of the numidian which would make sense and of course he has a reference to a document that in, insinuates that this was part of the plan, right? And they got rushed. They didn't get all the souls together. They didn't mm-hmm. mash it in together. Something, you know, didn't come together in the last moments because of the battle. And instead of fitting them all into this, it actually just wiped them out. Boom, they're dead, right? Yep. Sounds like a legitimate actual thing that could have happened, right? This seems mm-hmm. to make sense, um, and it, and it comes with a reference. So I would I would love to dig deeper into this, Aramithius. I think you would, of course, be awesome. You're always welcome on the show. We'd love to have you digging into this with us in a future episode. But we'll just leave that there, not to be discussed anymore on this episode. Let's get into some of the wackier stuff. What do you say we do that? Yeah, hey, let's do this. All right, so here we go. First one, and this one's pretty short. So this one, and, and I did some, I did some crawling around on the internet for some of these, and I think some these might coincide with some of the ideas that people have kind of floating out there in the wild because these aren't things that I, I haven't heard. You know, these are these are things that echo things that I have heard in talking to some other people. So this one comes from a uh, a forum post. 
And I'm not going to call specific people out because just in case they don't want to be called out, some of these are actually fairly old, so they may not even think that these are legitimate ideas anymore. This sure. one says, um, so what if the Dwemer aren't gone? Instead, what if they trap themselves inside the constructs they created? Just an idea, since it doesn't seem like they, seemingly from what's been said by lore, but like the seemingly by what's been said in the lore, Dwarves were all that nice to begin with, not to mention the machines have functioned for centuries by repairing themselves and some even become friendly, maybe children or the few who oppose their culture. Either way, just a thought, just wanted to share if anyone else has, has seen this. Um, and then someone else followed up and says, yes, this is the exact idea I had for a while now. They trap themselves inside the soul gems they use for their constructs and have been furiously trying to rebuild their civilization since their war with the Chimer and over the years have driven themselves insane with their futile attempts. <laughs> so what if their own spirits are powering these machines, which seem to just last forever, right? Like they have this, huh. like you, you come across these machines hundreds and hundreds of years later and the machines just keep on running and seem to be whiling away underground in these cities, protecting the cities, kind of keeping everything running as if they were the owners of the cities. That's a pretty neat one. And it kind of, <laughs> that seems like a pretty rough misdirection in life. If that's where your entire race got misplaced, it's like, okay, well you get now to be basic little makeshift automatons stuck maintaining these cities that are collapsing over time type of deal. That's uh, hmm. That's a, that, that seems like they just would have imprisoned themselves after that. That, that one's a little dark. <laughs> yeah. Like what if, what if they didn't mean to do it? You know, like of course something went wrong. You're it's a side effect this, with the heart or something like effect. that, you know, you know or, or what if, what if uh, it's classic concept of like, uh, you ask the genie for immortality and, and that's your immortality. Here's right? your immortality. You're going to live forever in these soul gems. That is that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Now, not that it, they were asking a genie for mortality, but the, the but, but I was the gonna analogy say you're essentially like a, a quote, quote unquote, their, one of their wishes was to ascend and, you know, kind of gain immortality. This would theoretically be one way that they could have obtained it. And also a pretty rough one that, you know, monkey's paw scenario. It's like, yep, you're immortal, but now you're a robot. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. old cag managed to g give them what they asked for i guess <laughs> yeah yeah or you know what, what if that was their punishment like what sure, if they, for, what if they messing with it yeah what if the gods struck them down in their attempt at gaining god oh, we all know they don't do anything anyways <laughs> you know or or what if you know the power of lorcan's heart struck them down what yeah, if that, what if the messing the with it's, the heart was like it, Tampered. Messing with the heart is, you know, has had some interesting stuff come about from messing with it. And in their situation, that's pretty aggressive. Just like time to smash the heart, get the good stuff. It's like, all right, well, that's it's about as direct as it gets. So mm -hmm. or, I kind of like that one. That one's kind of decent like that. That's neat. I actually I haven't heard that one, but it would extend. I, I don't know. I, I like the idea of just like, oh no, they've been there this whole time. You just aren't talking to them. Like, yeah. Or what if the Numidium, what if the walk brass tower wasn't just the one giant construct? What if it was the sum of the entire Dwemer civilization? What okay. if all of the Dwemer constructs together are the Numidium? It, it, yeah, it, it's, we've in the series kind of defined the Numidium as just the Numidium, as opposed to all of the Dwemer parts that make the whole of the Numidium. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, okay, I can, I can see what you're saying. It's right. just, it, you know, the actual quote unquote, you know, the thing that we know is the Numidium just tends to be the one that is most associated with that, as opposed to, each of the parts makes up one full thing that's a new medium. Right. Yeah, maybe that, maybe all of the maybe all of the constructs, maybe all of the underground workings are all somehow connected and channel power all into each other. Maybe they're all part of a, a greater 
That's an interesting idea. On top of that, man, we break a lot of the Numidium then throughout the game. <laughs> we do. We're constantly breaking all the parts. Just breaking it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's been it's been ages of the world. It's been eras. <laughs> Just smashing Numidium pieces left and right each game. This is an actual an achievement in ESO just for breaking a thousand of them or something like that. It's like, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? Little pieces. What do you think? What do you think about the uh, potential l- plausibility of this we'll call it plausibility i i actually really like that one i i out of all the weird because i've heard plenty of twimmer theories or whatever but for some reason i i've never come across that one i kind of like that one um i i i don't know give that give i i what are we what are we rating these out of out of 10 out of 10 plausibility score out of 10 one soul gem is a is is you know <laughs> one out of ten soul gem. I'm gonna give that one a. I I think that one's got a lot that I like about it. So I'm gonna say I I, I want to give that one eight soul gems. Eight out soul of gems. 10. Yeah, I was thinking like seven I, or eight. I like that one. Yeah. I like that one a lot actually. Okay. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I, I I'm down with that. I think seven or eight. That, like I don't know that it yeah. really holds up. I don't know that there's any actual real references to this but uh, no uh, yeah well a lot of this is going to be a lot more speculation uh, based on like hey they're messing with the god's heart okay well I, you right. can really spin that in a lot of different directions and the series hasn't given you too many concrete bits right right okay so here let's go on to, to the next one um i think i think you might like this so this one also comes from the Elder Scrolls Online forum, and uh, this one's more recent. And it says, as I was playing through Skyrim yet again, I took a closer look at the artwork of the environments. And this time around, I noticed a prevalent motif in all Dwemer ruins. And the, the motif is a central structure with a circle and a dot in the middle with some lines coming out of that central circle with the dot and two of the lines look like they have these kind of shapes, which looks like Hermaeus Mora in Dwemer structures. Huh? Yes. Have um, here, actual picture. I will, this? I will put this up on the screen right now All right, for this, anybody who really wants to see it. And I'm you have my up, attention. I'm loading it up right now. This, this image shows up pretty regularly. See it on the screen. So this is great huh. audio podcasting, but yes, a circle like an eye with lines radiating out from it and two of the lines out to the side. So it looks kind of like a like a, a crab with a big eye in the middle. I've never noticed or this, but yeah, he looks a like tentacle the, monster that that could be a tentacle monster or like, you know, looking at amoebas through a microscope. Either of those. Yeah. I, yep. All right. All and right. This image shows up in some of the Dwemer structures in Skyrim. It's actually fairly, fairly common. And uh, they go on to write. And I thought, well, th- that's strange. That's not really a geometric pattern like you would think the Dwemer would have used, given their propensity for logic and reason. But then it hit me. The reason why Dwemer civilization was so far advanced beyond everyone else, the reason they had the tech to make automatons, the reason they had giant steam-powered elevators into massive caverns while everyone else was working with simple staircases. You know what else looks like this motif? Of course, Hermaeus Mora. How else would they have gotten the knowledge to build something like the Numidium? How else would Kagernak have learned how to make his famous tools in an attempt to achieve divinity? But all of these massive achievements by the Dwemer always co- came with a cost. In the name, in the case of the Numidium, every time it was used, it was accompanied by sweeping changes to the space-time continuum. And of course, by trying to manipulate Lorcan's heart with his tools, Kagernak Kagernak vanished the Dwemer from the face of Nern. Why else would the motif be so prevalent in Dwemer stonework? It's literally everywhere in any Dwemer ruin. But it makes sense if they were trying to give a nod to the being who essentially made all the great advances of their civilization possible. And of course, it also makes sense that old Hermamora would be playing the long game and trade all of those technological secrets to the Dwemer, knowing he would eventually have the last laugh. As he would put it, all knowledge has a price. Hmm. So do you think that he's spent centuries 
feeding them knowledge, knowing that they would abuse it and he would eventually be able to consume them or consume their souls or take from them what he wanted when the time was right. Interesting. That forbidden knowledge, the forbidden knowledge of technology, I mean, the forbidden knowledge of how to harness the power of Lorcan's heart. I was going to say I, that the forbidden knowledge around the heart of Lorcan in general, like yes, even yep, the discovery no, of even knowing where it you. was. Right. It's like we're going to just keep feeding you what you need to get. Okay. Now one of you is going to want to touch that. It's like, go on, go on, do mm -hmm. it, do mm -hmm. it. It's like, Oh, so that's what happens when you, when you smash them. Cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> Cause I do. Yeah. I, one of the things that I've always found funny about just the, you know, just from the goofy side of imagining Hermaeus more collecting like information a lot of times. And there's actually a really cool little side quest tangentially Hermaeus Mora related in Blackwood um, that kind of addresses this. And it almost is as weird as it sounds, but it's just like from the perspective of, I made kind of like the, the comment where it's like, Oh, he kind of looks like an amoeba puppy. Uh, he looks kind of <laughs> like, like an amoeba or something like that in, in the, in that design from the flip side, him collecting information really just almost seems like more just like if I jam these two things together, what happens? All right. I'm going to poke this one. What Science. happens? And just like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sciencing his way across all of like the, the, the oceans of, you know, time and space here, just jabbing stuff just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And the, in this very concrete version where it's just like, come on, smash that heart for me. See, I want to know what it does. Yeah. And then yeah. having the Dwemer smash it and just be like, boop. And this is it's like, oh, cool. All right. So that's what happens. All right. Anyways, next. Right. Like well, here's the other thing is that in the first era, the heart was discovered. And how would, how would the Dwemer have discovered where the heart was? It was under the ocean. Yeah. It was it, actually, it was underneath the, the mountain. <laughs> It, it under like it was underground in the heart of the mountain below ocean level like were they just delving into the depths of a volcano like what what was the point of that like what was like you don't look at a volcano and go mm, that seems like a good place to start digging and like you just like that's not I, you know what i'm saying like it there's not a good reason to start delving into an active volcano <laughs> unless there's something you know down there that you want to go find <laughs> right that's yeah i i this is interesting i'm liking these so far these are wacky and uh, very yeah, enjoyable yeah some, some so really cool far. stuff um so I, i'm gonna call this one out because this one was only from a year ago september 20 actually yeah a year ago september 2020 uh so this is saucy jack on the elder scrolls online forums and i'm sure you can respond to this if you want to because this yeah. is pretty current still um yeah yeah so these are gonna get weirder um what do you think about this one though Plausi plausibility uh, scale i mean the plausibility of that is more than i actually at first was going to give this credence and it really makes me realize that out of all the time I spent in Skyrim, I never specifically like looked in one of those. Uh, I don't know. It, it's like a recess in the, in the structure. Yeah. Cause I think it's often in the, um, uh, I mean, this one looks like it's on a wall. I feel like sometimes that, it was in some of those, like, like it's on a wall or that you were looking straight cases? down at like a table. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those cases like, uh, um, right. And you would look down in the cases. There, there were like these uh, shelves, like the shelving areas. I feel like it was yeah, in those yeah, sometimes. no, no, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, huh? I, I would say that that hmm. I could see there being a uh, a pretty solid potential to this, just because for anybody who's played the um, Dragonborn expansion, I, I, or you know, pretty much any interaction with Mora, there's plenty, and well, not plenty, but there's a few in ESO. Once Mora gets what information he is trying to collect, um, if you're no longer of use, it's kind of like meh. So the fact that this could result in the Dwemer basically just being tossed 
in the trash, e- even if it wasn't the heart that necessarily does it, but it's like, okay, you've worn out your usefulness to me. Like, mm-hmm. but it, like we're just going to collect whatever it does. You know, I'll put you in my Petri dish of finding out how do you react as a race to it or something like that. There's a whole bunch of other theories you could spin off based on that, which I kind of like, but I don't know. I, I, or just moves them to a pocket dimension and then just runs yeah, tests like, on oh, them for eternity. To a for while we, Right. Absorb whatever knowledge I can out of what you've been doing the past, you know, millennia. Um, I, I'm going to give this one like I, I could see this being pretty similar, like maybe a seven, seven soul gems area type of thing. That that one's there's nothing honestly too outlandish about it that makes me think it couldn't necessarily be a thing. But it almost seems like something you could attach on to other theories. Yeah. I'm I'm in agreement. I, I think this one's interesting. You know, you and I both love uh, some Hermie Mora. And oh, yeah, the idea that he like this would be the one little hints of some things going on, like the real long play that he's been working on underneath yep. all of this stuff. Super cool. Like, that's a super cool thing. So, yeah, I, I like that. I like that a lot. That's that's a, it's a pretty good one. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of that one, actually. I, I like that quite a bit, especially based on something that's been there this whole time that I actually just haven't seen. Like, I do yeah. not remember that. Yeah. It, like, I remember that setup, but I guess I've never stared closely enough at it that it's like, hey, that little squiggly thing kind of looks more alike. Right. Right. Yeah. It, like, oh. Well. Hey, there you go. Maybe yeah. it's just, it could just, what if it's just like, um, a bunch of like Skyrim kids just running into old ruins. Just just, and he's like, he, 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 yeah. <laughs> just jarring squiggly Le- line, leaving squiggly <laughs> line crap all over the place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, tell you what, we've got some more to get to, but we have to go thank our patrons for being awesome. So we'll be right back in one second. The skies are marked with numberless sparks, each a fire and every one a sign. So as of right now, we have 46 patrons and that is, that is phenomenal. At the beginning of the show, I mentioned all of the current patrons who are tier three will now be getting stickers. All the tier four and higher patrons will now be getting t-shirts. And I hope you guys love the designs as much as I do. If you want to sign up, then just check out patreon.com slash elder scrolls lore cast. And you can now be getting merch for being a member of our patreon and i hope you guys love it i hope you guys absolutely love it and as always i have to call out our tier five and higher patrons we have two tier five patrons this month we've got daniel o and noodle al dente as usual so thank you to to those friends and because it's the beginning of a new month i have to call out any of our new people who signed up in august and we have uh gorka munda Signed up. Thank you, Gorkamunda and Echo Squad and Jeremy T or Jeremy T. I, I, I always say Jeremy, but um, Jeremy is probably the better way to say that name. And Tracy F. Thank you for signing up in August. I think that's everybody. Let me just double check. Yep. That's everybody who signed up in August. And if you're uh, interested in helping to support the show, but you don't have any money to pitch in, but you still want to help us out, then just sharing it with your friends or leaving a rating and, and review on Apple Podcasts is a wonderful way to do that. You don't even have to listen on Apple Podcasts, but you just need an Apple account and you just go to the website and sign up for that. And it's really easy. You can just hit the little five stars. And if you leave a review, then we might read it out on a future episode of the show. And so if we've helped you through your work day, your commutes, your workout, your you know cooking in the kitchen or cleaning up, your yard or whatever you're doing, then heck, we'd love you to just take a few minutes to do something like that. It would help out a ton. So thank you to everybody who helps support the show. Oh, and Lotus, I checked out our numbers recently on one of those like podcast websites. And do you know how many podcasts there are in the world? Uh, oh, wow. That actually you almost get... became very um, un-PG related. Had I said what I was going to say. <laughs> you were going to say um, like an effing lot. Yeah. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> do you know how many? Do you just guess. I have, guess a number. I, I'll, guess a number. Uh, 116,000. There are over 2,600,000 wow, podcasts. <laughs> 2,600,000 thousand podcasts oh, two million holy crap six hundred thousand okay. over over that many there's probably closer to two million seven hundred thousand podcasts if i don't if i get the number right. i think it was like two million six hundred thousand six hundred eighty one thousand wow. something like that um so of those two million six hundred eighty one thousand podcasts what percentage do you think we are in 
in like top the top percentage of podcasts oh. based, based on numbers. Now I feel dumb because you posted, I po- I posted this, this on Twitter and I read it and yeah. I'm pretty sure I retweeted it and I don't remember what the number was. <laughs> yeah. Were we in the top 10% I think or something like that? We are in the top 1% of podcasts. That's even better. <laughs> Isn't that insane? <laughs> also, that's ridiculous. That's n- of two m- freaking million six hundred and whatever thousand podcasts. We are in the top one percent of podcasts on the planet. That is amazing. So thank you to uh, all of our wow. listeners. That is not something that we did. That is something that you guys did by listening to the show, sharing it with your friends, and just being awesome by just being here with us and listening to the show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. That's I, I can't say thank you enough. You guys are awesome. And, so And I will say I apologize in advance that so many of you <laughs> need to listen to my voice that many times because that is an insane amount of downloads. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, but but thank you, guys. Um, yeah, I, I was looking at our dum- download numbers this year. Like we're already at a quarter of a million download numbers over a quarter of a million download numbers just this year. So, Damn. yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of listening that you guys have done. So thank you for being here genuinely from the from the bottom to the top of my Lorcan heart. Nice. Nice. That's nice. All right. Let's go talk about more Dwemer stuff. <laughs> here we go. Yes. Yes. You're entirely brilliant. Conquering madness and all that. Blah, 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 blah. Grim's asking how many total downloads altogether. I've changed platforms a few times, so I don't have it's this not easy to just pull up a total number. I I believe we're at we're in, we're uh, what 600 600,000 total maybe 700,000 total downloads overall for the life of the show nice. Some, something like that That's so, crazy high. That's a lot of downloads. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, it's probably in that range, I think. Yeah, it's it's a lot of downloads. Thank you everybody. Um, yeah. Well, here, let's talk about some more some more drummer stuff. That's like mildly (laughs) mind-blowing it's a lot of downloads it's a lot of stuff um yeah so uh here we go here's another one and i told you these are gonna get a little bit wackier are you ready you're holding on to your uh your tools (laughs) your crack crack cat tools again i've got a dwemer cube does that count (laughs) close enough all right here we go good enough here's another one this one comes from the fandom site this is a post from about four or five years ago this one says, where have all the Dwemer gone? A theory. All right, hold on to your tools. Here we go. Or, or your cube. This is my work in progress theory as to how the Dwemer actually disappeared. This is also my first post on the forum. Here it goes. The Dwemer never actually vanished from Tamriel. They are trapped in untime with the Brass God and have been ever since they invoked him at the Battle of Red Mountain. This is known. Oh, it is known that activating Numidium has induced dragon break in the past and it is recorded that the dwemer successfully activated the first brass tower on the date of the battle of the red mountain the same day their entire race disappeared from the face of tamriel so why did they vanish well and this is getting into the metaphysics of skyrim here but i am just going to put it out there when the dwemer activated numidium they allowed the secrets of immortality as discovered by high engineer k so kagranak to manifest in all dwemer as the seeming purpose of dragon breaks in nature is to resolve any paradoxes, subs- uh, I'm sorry, sorry, any paradoxes consequential of returning to a dawn era mode of existence, that is, on a non linear time scale, by occurring whatever events had to have had happened simultaneously in real time, linear, in, I'm sorry, in real linear time. Remember the events of Morrowind and Oblivion. It is only natural that the Dwemer fell along with their brass god into a state of untime. Everyone can't be immortal at once. So time, as it exists in the Elder Scrolls, had to resolve itself. Are you following? So when this happened, it created a paradox. So therefore it it created a dragon break and they moved out of time. This is justification. Roughly. Okay. Okay. So, and so the Dwemer's dying wish of existing on a higher plane was suddenly fulfilled. It would explain why the temples did not go with the Dwemer. Of course, by the time the events of Skyrim take place, temples like Mzolf have fallen into serious disrepair, but they weren't seemingly obliterated by anything. It was a temporal phenomenon that wiped out the Dwemer, not a spatial one. 
So basically, they are removed from time. They weren't sent to another plane okay, of existence. I'm, I'm on board with that, that it's not a... Um like a physical thing that necessarily removed them. But uh, so maybe I'm getting overly hung up on this one thing that was uh, kind of portrayed as if it was like, yeah, because clearly they can't all be immortal at once. Because they're, they're, why? they're not, they're not immortal. They're not like moving in time indefinitely. Right. They right. are removed from time, from time. So they're, but it It's would... like they're put into another, they're, they're removed from the time plane sure but i get i guess like what i don't understand is why is it a paradox that they couldn't all achieve that at the same time like i don't don't know what what in what in the lore says that that is (laughs) i I mean vampires are immortal like there's plenty of immortal crap so like yeah okay whatever add a a million dwemer of immortal that that one i'm getting hung up on the fact was like well i don't understand why it's a paradox so Right, right. Here, let me let me keep yeah. reading. Um, but yeah, finish, finish up. So, uh, do, 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 I lost where I was. Um, there is also a quaint little star called uh, Nemoli that must be researched more in depth. Unless, of course, we already have all the lore we can get on that. We know it shines brighter every untime. I believe this occurs in game somewhere around midsummer. We also know from Vex teachings that it causes the summit of an unnamed mountain to catch fire every time it passes. I don't know what he's referencing here. Well, I don't either. While it is not said what mountain it was that this happens to, the pilgrims of Veloth agree it was the location of one of the last Dwemer strongholds in Tamriel. This cannot be a coincidence, can it? The god of time is a dragon called Akatosh. Maybe he is the one spewing fire on Red Mountain, scolding the arrogance of the Dwemer race. The Dwemer getting stuck in uh, an untime would also explain why there is no evidence of them ever having reached Sovereign Guard, which wouldn't make sense because the Dwemer wouldn't go to Sovereign Guard either. I I was going to say the Dwemer wouldn't go to Sovereign Guard to begin with. Right. You don't have to be ignored to get there. Oblivion, the Black Marsh, or the Dream Sleeve, which is where their life force would have been sent if they actually died. So this person is assuming those are all the same place, which they apparently did not as they can't be found anywhere in the afterlives of any other races, nor in the escapable, uh, inescapable realm of dream sleeve. So b- basically they're saying like, if you go to any of the afterlife zones, you have no reference to them at all, which I guess is fair. You can't find them in, in referenced in any afterlife. Right. Unless they went like directly to Ethereus or something. This would further corroborate that all of the Dwemer kind achieved immortality on that fated day and as a consequence had and have to experience reality on the plane of untime for the rest of their days. Immortality is for the gods and the honorable dead. A maxim that has yet to be broken in the Skyrim universe. So I, he's using immortality not in the sense of like a vampire lives forever, but in immortality in a sense that like you cannot die. Yeah, but <laughs> it's got a little bit more. Let's see what else yeah, he has to say. Yeah, it's fine. Hey, you know, this this one I'm struggling a yeah. bit with here. Yeah, yeah. I'm told you these get weirder. It, it, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> I know the discussion won't ever end, but I'm going to need you guys to go on and uh, go in game. Elder Scrolls Five and Mormon to find more evidence for my theory. <laughs> <laughs> Anything helps, but I believe we're going to get more close, uh, closer on any of all Dwemer to English inscriptions that have been created thus far. From Blackreach, blah, 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 blah. I also believe that the promised day has something to do with the prophecy of the Dragonborn as it relates to Numidium and the nature of Akatosh. Some players have recently traced a pentagram through locations of import on the global Skyrim map connecting five insects stuck in bell jars. We know that that doesn't actually amount to anything. I was going to say, we know for a fact right. that that's not a that's thing. That's not a thing, right? <laughs> um, do you think the drummer are, are trapped in untime? Do you think they could ever find a way to escape it? Do you think that they they would? Granted, it would mean they would have to give up their immortality. So he's basically saying they gained immortality by being plucked out of our actual time structure to live undyingly which, which, outside yeah, of our... so that like an immortal master or something like that but that yeah. see this is kind of my problem with this one it, at least for me there are literally versions of what he's saying there are not versions of in things we've dealt with in the series like you know for example 
the ideal masters are immortal as far as I, I i i as far as i i mean like that that's a that's a thing um but to your point he doesn't really mean it in the way that vampires are like immortal quote unquote but it's like that you can kill vampires still so it's like i i don't think that's really what he meant so i i see what you're saying there mm-hmm. um but then you've got like the other <sighs> sort of referencing like that they're they're kind of achieved gut like it's almost like the they achieved thim chim, thim uh they achieved chim, chim theory uh-huh. but then it's kind of hodgepodged in with a bunch of assumptions of things that don't seem to really work to me where it's just like yeah yeah a little too much of that is uh either making peculiar assumptions on things or l- like things that kind of are actually a little more concrete in game or, or, or just like trying to draw connections to other things that I'm like, yeah, I the, mean, the, the evidence sure, is super sketchy. The, the evidence is very sketchy, but th- yeah, what I, a, what that, I do find one... interesting about this and the reason why I included it was this idea of not just like they moved from one realm to another realm but more of they actually were pulled from a time to a timeless space. Right. That which that is unique because that that's different than just a physical realm to another physical realm. And they which, now just exist there. I mean, that's kind of like when they get the, you know, when, when they activate the Elder Scrolls. I mean, a lot of this was drawn on like referencing Skyrim bits. Mm. So on that, very similar to like I, I i'm guessing that he means like along the same theory of like when they took aldwin and chucked him out of time until he were to like is that the like out of time that they're referring on time yeah whatever yeah, that it's means like on time but yeah, I, I don't know i don't know how i feel about this one right. i don't know how i feel right. about this one so what do you think like a two yeah again the 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 like pull it i'll I'll give it i'll give it three soul gems three soul gems gems. all right three soul gems because you know some removal from this this existence plane however he's he's not totally devoid of anything it's just some of the things i find to be kind of a stretch Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so Here's another one. This one kind of moves in another direction here. It's not as it's not as far out there as the last one. I mean, it's not as as un, unsubstantiated. It's just, but again, the, the core concept. I want you to focus a little bit on the core concept here. So uh, again, this one's fairly old. It says uh, crackpot Dwemer theory. Uh, earlier, my friend made an offhand comment about dragon breaks and how they seem to center around pivotal events in the history of Tamriel. He also noted that in some way, creatures can be sent back or forward in time i.e. Alduin. This got me thinking. It's silly that in a world that is basically medieval, the Dwemer are so far ahead technologically as to develop steam power, airships, and robots. Another thing that is noted is that Dwemer history is extensively imprecise, or is extremely imprecise. This could be due to the effects of a dragon break, which the wiki even likens to the Dwemer disappearance. It seems that dragon breaks occur around centers of vast power. The Numidium, the readings of the Elder Scroll, Numidium is especially important as the center of the dragon break. Why? Because its power source originally is the heart of Lorcan. When the Dwemer disappeared suddenly, Kagranak was attempting to use the very same heart of Lorcan in order to make them all immortal. He obviously screwed up, right? So we've got the foundation. We're talking Numidium, heart of Lorcan, immortality, right? Same, same basic stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, my theory is thus, is thus. <laughs> when Kagranak messed up, what he did exactly was create a dragon break similar to that of Alduin. Only he channeled the energy energy into his entire race. The Dwemer were sent back in time to the very beginning of time, the Dawn Age, where their history starts, and they essentially relived their history again until again Kagranak resolved to make things right. And once more he made a mistake. This would explain their technological advancement. 
This would explain why Yagram is unable to find any trace of the Dwemer. They essentially stop existing after the Dragon Break, break being sent back to experience it again. This would also prove ironic. Kagranak was attempting to make his race immortal. When it seemed clear the Chimer would defeat them in battle, it would be poetic justice if they became immortal, in that they had to relive their history again and again. This would also explain one more thing, why no account of the great battle is the same. According to the wiki, due to the quote, due to the break, not one account of what happened at Red Mountain holds more truth than another. One reason for co conflicting accounts is conflicting events. It didn't happen exactly the same every time. Not only that, but some say that Dagoth Ur activated Lorcan's heart, perhaps in a later redux of the battle. The Dwemer were beginning to win due to their technological superiority, and Dag Dagoth used the power to defeat them temporarily. So the concept here is it's like Groundhog Day for the Dwemer. They get to the battle, they get sent back in time, they now have more technological prowess and an understanding of what's going to happen. They get to the battle, they, get, they still mess up, they get sent back in time, they get to the battle, they get sent back in time, they get to the battle, they get sent back in time. Every time they get to the battle, things happen a little bit differently, but they, they inevitably still get sent back in time because everything still eventually messes up. Ah. And so the, the explanation of what happens at the battle is always a little bit different based on what happens at the battle because it's you have different accounts of it piling up okay that's i i guess the the, the one issue with that one that seems kind of peculiar is so like the, the first time they accounts the first time the they battle got, yeah have ceased <laughs> like yeah, there's a whole bunch of different accounts of the Battle of Red Mountain, but theoretically... There's not infinite. Would, there's not more being added each time. There's a pretty finite amount of them. They're all suspect to what exactly happened, but there's like nine suspect things of what happened, not... Infinite. Infinite. Right. So that one sounds a little peculiar. Also, I mean, I guess when you when you... I don't know. We're getting into weird, wacky theories of time stuff and um, dragon breaks. So it gets real dicey when all time and no time actually all took place at the same time. Um, granted, in this time period there, it seemed like a lot of their stuff was pretty technologically advanced. But like just from the example of airships, I mean, other groups had airships, too like so <laughs> right. like that's that's right. not even that but then when you play in the games it's father down the line so did they learn to make airships because of the previous airships but then uh, there's some reference to slow possibly having airships so they i guess would also have airships so, but to 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 do their necromantic shadiness and stuff well the I, slow do put romance in necromance nice Nice. I both love and hate that. <laughs> I didn't deliver that quite right. It's, I'm going to allow all <laughs> of that. <laughs> the slow um, put romantic and necromantic. So it's, you know what? I, right no, I'm good. That. I'm good with the nope. <laughs> We're wow. going with it. But um, yeah, I, I don't know that that one seems. I. Because there's just different interpretations of what happened at Red Mountain, it doesn't strike me the same as in, like, the Interregnum. Like, mm -hmm. in Elder Scrolls Online, uh, it's a period of time where there's really very little documented, and it's a mess. And then you've got Elder Scrolls Online filling in these blanks, but then everybody's story is their own story at the same time. So, like, which ones are real? And there's, like empires rising and falling which they've tied into cyrodiil with people being crowned emperor and stuff like that that's a missing chunk of history the battle of red mountain isn't really a missing chunk of history it's just a highly debated highly de yeah, it, it, yeah which surprise you get that from real life war too oh, yeah where it's like oh well from our perspective this was not so great that doesn't strike me Heck, as so undocumented we get, that. we get that in events that happened in the last eight months <laughs> that's valid <laughs> like, <laughs> so it never struck me as like 
information lost to time like you know honestly yeah like groundhog day like you said where it's like oh crap here we go again it's like magic vortex and then all of a sudden the dwemer are digging their way back up and it's just like mm-hmm. I, it, yeah this one it's creative i think it's a fun idea but i don't yeah. know that it holds weight it, it's creative but it's but a but fun it idea it's a little too goofy i guess without it being just like more i can't believe i'm about to say this if that time period was wackier i think this would hold weight but the mm-hmm. fact that it's not completely derailed in that area and that's actually a more concrete story with just different perspectives that one strikes me as a i don't i don't i don't, I don't know if i i go with that one too, or, too much it's certainly creative though or if we got like nine loops and on the ninth loop that was the destruction of the dwemer like right there was an official like final loop where Kagernak yeah, like actually did something different and then they disappeared for good but then that doesn't sure this we would still have to explain like well where did they go but right and <laughs> it doesn't then that really just solve the problem back to the question of like okay all we did was get to the same question with <laughs> right. nine groundhog day movies or <laughs> dwemer day movies yeah. like you know i well, could watch groundhog day nine times it's a good movie yeah, well no i could too but uh, can <laughs> but you yeah, watch no, dwemer you. day nine times is really the question uh, yeah so so mm. yeah that that one's I don't know. That one's just a little peculiar. I, it's certainly creative, but yeah, that one's less meh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fun. It gets, yeah, it's it gets fun. points for being fun. It, it certainly is. And it's definitely different. Okay. So what do you think for plausibility? I would give that one. I'd probably give that one a three. Um, because three for plausibility, but I think it gets like a five for fun. Yeah, it, it, you can give it a little bonus points for fun, but I would have it pretty much in the same category as the last one for yeah. like odds that I'll buy this. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Okay, so I've got one more, and this one, I'm going to tell you right now, this one gets a zero for plausibility. Absolute okay. zero, because great. we've already we've already We're ruled this out. We're a great start. I love we've already this. ruled this out in a previous episode, and you're going to know as soon as I talk <laughs> about this that we this is this one's right out. This is, this well, I mean, to be fair, one real. of the other ones, I, I mean, going, I, you know, we try to keep this like fun to be like in lore, but like out of lore, I mean, the the one before where he the reference was made to the bugs in jars oh, yeah. with the yeah. symbols on the bottom. Right. I mean, the artist who did that literally just said that these have no purpose. Yeah, it's <laughs> so just it's a thing like, he did. Yeah. Objectively, that one's pretty much done because it's just like, well, one of the people on the team was like, yeah, no, this was going to be a different quest and we just never finished it, but we left the bugs in the jars in the game. It's like, right. they don't mean anything. Alrighty. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, they literally don't mean anything. Cause that quest wasn't finished. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. So this one doesn't mean anything. It has no chance of actually being real. Um, it's kind of, I I'm including it because it's probably the most creative way to, Oh boy. I can't combine this is a Dwemer theory and this other theory that I've read on the internet. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm prepped. And I, I think it will be equal parts. Wow. That's also creative. That's creative and equal parts. Gag me right now. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So it's, it's a good one and a bad one at the same time. So, uh, so here you go. And, um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. All right, here we go. Ooh. Also this one's, I'm not going to say anything more about it because I I don't don't go look it up. I don't want people like poo pooing on this. I'm just going to just going to read it and be nice. Be nice, Internet. All right, here we go. Um, I believe Bethesda is setting up a merger of their IPs, introducing Nerdroot into Fallout 4 in the crux of my imaginations below. (laughs) So from that, the Dwemer are actually vault dwellers. And the Bridwin is their airship. <laughs> the, <coughs> um, all right. I'm sorry. Uh, the Dwemer ruins our vaults. When a vault gets corroded, it turns brawn, sl- bronze slash rust colored. So it's an odd metal, much like Dwemer metal. The Dwemer robots are sentry bots, assault drones, the Chinese spider bots. What? Etc. 
the steam power in Dwemer Runes are really back up thermal reactors in select Wait, vaults. Rewind one quick second. Hold yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the little propaganda bots from Fallout 76 are the Dwemer spiders is, yep. is the connection we just made. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just wanted to double check. Do they still drop propaganda flyers? Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. I, I, I warned you guys. I warned you guys. All right. I, All right. Did I warn? I warned you. Let's, let's it, keep going. We got it's creativity got more. out there. I've got one, two, three, here. four, five, six, seven, eight more paragraphs. Here we go. Azura, I think they mean Azura, and the other Adra, mm, Daedra, are synthetics that roam free after the Institute is destroyed. I think they mean synths. Um, yeah. They, so again, please be nice to this person. Don't 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 find this and poop on it. Yeah, we we don't, we don't need to harp on the technicalities yes. of anything because this please. is all gibberish. <laughs> please, please, please be nice. Please <laughs> Not be nice. just this one. <laughs> they said that all of them are gibberish. They salvaged Institute Tech to teleport and have robotic animals to spy on everyone. Lorcon is Liberty Prime, and the tools are really parts of a power suit or such. Lorcon's activation would renew nuclear power against Chinese remnants. I believe elves came up from genetic experiments, possibly China's FEV plot. What? This took, <laughs> this took a weird turn that I was not expecting. <laughs> oh my God, I need to I need to talk about this on the fall forecast. Oh my! Oh this, my! This took a turn. I was I, I was didn't like, know that okay, I China had an of, FEV okay, plot. We're, but okay, we're really the road is a thing that we cannot see anymore. Ooh, Got it? Ooh, okay, uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it through this. To withstand radiation and mutations create different races of elves to match their environments. Okay. So when Azura meets a new subjugated race, elves, she takes them under her wing and guides them in this horrible wasteland. She nurtures them to thrive, gets very invested in them. Then humans, vault dwellers, are going to kill them all with Liberty Prime. She teleports people somewhere else. They've destroyed this world before. Not again, she says. Possibly vault plan was to colonize Mars, which and is... now we're bringing in Doom? Wait, wait, wait. Which is <laughs> Oblivion. So she uses her teleportation system to send all vault humans to Oblivion. She pulls Death Claws, which are clan fears and other Dredria, there too. It's a pure start for the elves. At this point, instead of being elves versus humans, the elves started seeing other elves as a threat and created their separate races then. You still with me? Uh, no, I haven't been with you since like the first sentence in, but keep going. I'm I all can in. start over. You want me to nope, start? Just okay. keep, nope, just keep bu- borrowing through. <laughs> three, more, three more quick little paragraphs. Here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. Mud crabs are mire lurks devolving. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, so, I'm still trying to, trying to keep a straight face. Wait a minute. <laughs> I lied. Go back and repeat that. Mud crabs. <clears throat> Let me take a drink. <clears throat> Mud crabs are mire lurks devolving. <laughs> Orcs are super mutants that overcame sterilization. <laughs> Khajiit and Argonians are mutants. The Elder Scrolls are really pit boys, cartridges, or like tech. The blades are the remnants of the Brotherhood of Steel that can't produce power armor, so they guide the government. I don't know how that logic follows, but okay. Final paragraph. Now, I don't have all the answers, like ghosts or phantoms, but maybe the Greenwich buildings were releasing magic into the world, and it's gone to town since then. It's gone to town, all right. <laughs> That's it. Oh, okay, we're done? We're that, all done with that? Okay. That fever dream so, is over. <laughs> there, One thing I will say about all of that, which is quite a lot um so the parallels that this person drew between things just like design wise is kind of amusing like it's 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 a fun like okay you so have orcs yes. you have super mutants right you have spider dwemer you have chinese propaganda bots mm-hmm. you have vaults you have dwemer like 
the parallels that were drawn are actually kind of amusing when you think about that. They, it's like, they oh, that's are. really funny. There's they just are. so many things that theoretically it's like, oh, yeah, you could just be like, this is like this. This is like this. This is like that. The way that honestly you can kind of joke, but those the studios kind of just makes one game in two different settings <laughs> right <laughs> yeah like, it's like if you took a spreadsheet and you just had like okay here's all the races and you just kind of line them next to each other and then you just drew parallel lines between whatever the closest two things were right right yeah, right this right. is kind of where things would roughly line up yeah and you'd be and like it, okay this is this this is this is this now how do we justify it mm, maybe this is the, this is the justification right and you just kind of force the two into each other this is what would happen right so the, and, and the thing about this, which is kind of funny, which, uh, again, just on the parallels of like the series they literally make. Um, one of the things that it was kind of funny, I don't know, uh, what, when Far Cry 3 came out, um, which was shortly after Skyrim, a lot of people were like, oh, man, it's like Skyrim with guns. And I like Fallout, uh, Far, Far Cry 3, but I was like, how is this Skyrim with guns? I was like, if you want Skyrim with guns, you play Fallout. It's just gun rim. Like, it's the yeah. same thing, oh, yeah. except in post-apocalypse, and you have guns. That's gun rim, not, not Far Cry 3. But yeah. having a lot of these parallels, it's like, wow, it really is really, like, just funny that you can just be like oh yeah th these are the orcs these are the okay that's kind of funny i'm amused by that like i i like that yep yep uh fev dweller jokes in chat and he says tom when did you post this <laughs> 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 um and dazan says it really sounds like a kid uh uh, as a fan making parallels um and yeah no it does it does uh, like this legitimately yeah, sounds like oh 100 yeah, this yeah. sounds like a, a teenager you know just kind of was like hey i just had an idea this seems like sure if you were to match and, these things up this is what you would get absolutely and like and that's that's why i'm saying like don't go, go don't go hunt this down and make fun of the person who wrote it because right, chances well, because are it's a young person who just had a creative idea and just posted it on the internet and that, good for and them you don't need to and, why not? and that's that's the thing you don't need to neck beard this one with like well it's yeah, not yeah. you know this thing or this thing right. it's just this, this one is just like <laughs> right our I, more sophisticated lore brains are going what this yeah. would be ridiculous that sounds so dumb but, but like but it, it it does it strikes me as more of a comparison thing yeah, yeah. than than like an actual theory so but at the same time I, like i Absolutely. said i just enjoyed like if you were like hey what's a thing that's like another thing it's like oh wow bethesda really good lord their their stuff is real similar absolutely <laughs> like, absolutely um, especially especially things like getting names wrong like slightly or not understanding that azura sure. isn't an adra uh, sure. It's that like, sounds like somebody who has played the series a little bit and on, understands things just kind of sure. rough around the edges and is just writing about it. You right. know, like like well, me I, when I was 13 and I was just making stuff up, you know, like to be to be fair, though, um, I, I wasn't sure how deep this was going to go, because once once Mars got mentioned, I was like, oh, my God, we're bringing in doom. doom. Like we're bringing in doom. <laughs> and then somehow we're going to do the doom quake crossover. Wolfenstein. Which, it's next. Yeah, and and then we're gonna drag in Wolfenstein, and then bam, Dishonored comes in from the left with the whale punk, whatever. Oh my God. It's like I want. To, okay, here's here's what we should do. We should we should see if if somebody, if one of our listeners, can work together a justification for how all of the major Bethesda titles are all in the same universe. Does it have to be good? Because I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want someone to write something that's like no more than a thousand words, but okay. like, but justifies how all of the, all of the major, t all the major IPs. So everything from, you know, like, like you said, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein. And then we, we also have to throw in some of the other stuff like, um, uh, Dishonored. Um, we have to have prey. Prey has to be in there. Uh, what else? Um, uh, the uh, uh, what was the, What's the spooky one? Um, I need to look uh, these up. The evil within. Evil within. Evil within needs to be in there. Then what else is there? Um, chat, help us out. Uh, oh, what about rage? You gotta get rage, rage in there. That's right. Rage needs to be in there. Starfield. Yeah. Starfield needs oh, to be in perfect. there. Yeah, it's a future thing. Yes, Starfield. All right, good. Yeah, good, good. 
You should, I mean, however you guys want to fit them in there. This is like yeah, no, this is all totally no more than reasonable. a thousand words. It is really just like just like a sheet of paper. Just like how do all these things fit in the same universe? <laughs> Somehow cram them all in. Also, I would like to shout out that you said a thousand words or less, and uh, from chat, um, actually. <laughs> They recently just started their uh, podcast, the Quill and Vile podcast. But uh, actually, I I don't think I've ever said your name aloud. But <laughs> I think it's little. I've never said this before. The two L's it, in a row. It, it, yeah, I've just actually never pronounced. Olivia? Okay, Livia. I've never actually said your name. It's always been read via Twitter. Olivia. Okay. Olivia. So that is it. Okay. Just wanted to not butcher that, but, um, yeah, they just started up the Quill and Vile podcast. Nice. And, um, Livia solved it in three words. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's, so we didn't need a thousand words. It was just Kelpas. Uh, Kelpas on different Kelpas. <laughs> Boom. Done. Boom. Done. Amazing. Done. But you got to put them in order. You got to figure, you got to give us a little bit more than that. Like <laughs> this Kelpa led to this Kelpa, led, like this Kelpa ended when this happened and then led to this Kelpa, which birthed to this Kelpa. Like you gave us something. Right? I, I just love yes, the you're right. I think Kelpas like, would be a wonderful justification. I was going to say, I love how it was just like, boom. It's like, boom. oh yeah, you really Duh. could just BS your way out of that immediately. <laughs> yeah. Fev, you can submit a cork board with red string. Absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, that that's with pictures. Uh, it, yes. And, and Danny DeVito fair, has to be one of the images on this, on that though. We have to include it, him. It in should there be somehow. written like that too. Each theory needs to be mm -hmm. red string to the other one. So mm -hmm. you have to try to figure out the order to read everything mm -hmm. in too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Crazed hair is a requirement. Like <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> crazy hair. All of yep, crazy hair. Yeah. But well. I, so yes, that was, uh, we will be putting somebody in a soul gem for that one, but we will give it one soul gem, not zero soul gems for me. That is one soul gem. All the right. writer's soul is in that gem, but <laughs> I love the creativity. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's fun. And I, and I, and I think, um, I think, uh, chat was right. Uh, whoever it was in chat, um daz i think it was who said uh you know it most likely was a kid who just kind of was playing with ideas and was like you know what if this is what's going on here so it's fun you know and yeah and you know we're we're going oh we know this isn't true this is cringy but really it's you know everybody just likes playing with ideas so let's just play with ideas and have fun with it but guys thank you for tuning into this episode yeah. i hope you had fun going over some really crazy dwemer theories i'm sure there are some that are way more substantiated than these and who knows maybe we'll cover some of those I in the future had not heard that i actually really really like yeah yeah so some fun stuff um but we'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these come join us on the robots radio discord channel and send us some thoughts in the elder scrolls Lorecast channel and remember we've got some new stuff on patreon if you want to sign up or upgrade to make sure that you can get your t-shirts and or your stickers and check those out as well lotus do you have anything cool going on anything you want to share um not really actually um <laughs> i really <laughs> not at all just the normal podcast stuff um streaming when i can but i've actually been streaming also it's a random junk um yeah so, so me it's too. which is which is weird because i don't usually do that hopefully i've been trying to get everything finalized for having some of the um old elder scrolls games just the emulators for some of these older ones, not the main, but these, these uh, mobile games have been a little rough. Mm. Um, but at the same time, just trying to finalize that so I can jump into them will be, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later. But yeah, I've just been playing a lot of Chivalry 2. Um, oh, dude. Torchlight 2. Dude. I, 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 sh I started that up the other night and chopped off some guys heads and stuff and yeah it's it's super oh. fun they gotta put in the that cross play party cross thing. play like i want to chop off people's heads great. with you right but all i can do is happen to just chance be in a server with you i know i we need to be able to all group up snap snap like <laughs> absolutely yeah get on it get on it chivalry yep. all right well um, yeah, I've been just kind of streaming when I can, not a whole lot of games lately. I've been working on a lot of projects, like I was talking in the pre-show, um, getting a lot of stuff done, getting a lot of art done for the Patreon stuff, and hopefully I'll get some more time coming up to play some more games. Um, jumped back into Destiny 2, man, that game is so good. There's a lot oh, of- Destiny 2. So it's weird. I, I, we'll go on a mild tangent right before we- Mild end, tangent. Yeah. I, so Destiny 2 is fun to play, but I like- 
Destiny 2 was always a better concept than a game to me. And I just I love them a bunch. I so love it's not like I don't settings. like them. I, I love short periods of time. I love just getting through the new content. And, and I've got like a bunch of not new content. I've got a bunch of old content that I just never caught up on. It, um, which I told. So, yeah, that that's, stuff. I love just visiting it, getting through the story stuff. I don't like grinding and, and content stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I just I love the setting, the shooting mechanics. I like just getting in it, blowing stuff up, running around with some other people the the world the graphics i just i just i take it in so like it's very pretty yeah um, I, I, I take it in like watching a movie yeah and i always thought that the raids were kind of neat mm -hmm. i had a lot of fun with those um, and then i'm done I, I play for a few weeks and i'm done yeah see i originally i played them a lot i platinumed both of them um which is 100 percent for Feb says i'm part of his raid team now <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, for, for anybody so it's like i i definitely played them a lot so not to downplay the fun factor of them my problem with them was just always that what they made for what they were trying to do always just seemed like so much less than what we were promised which i think kind of just got under my skin after a while because i do kind of like end game the crap out of this stuff mm -hmm. so it was it wasn't that it was bad ever but a lot of it to your point you don't like the grind it devolves into just grind 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 yeah. grind yeah. grind and that's, that's and i was just like i'm oh. i'm a tourist i i once it gets to grind once it gets to grind on any of these games i just hop into something else for a while yeah and and i'm fine with i that. didn't like the fact that i had fun with the grind and then they would just like undermine all of your gear with some like lame reason to the system. Yeah. And like after a couple times, I was like, I'm not re-gearing anymore. That's that's enough. <laughs> like yeah. I've I've yeah. I've had enough. Um but the new thing I've heard a lot of hype for, um, the Witch Queen or something like that. I yeah. I don't know the name. I saw the trailer, yeah. it looked pretty, but all their trailers look pretty. The game's gorgeous. It's it's a beautiful game. And I think I think maybe Bungie's had enough time now where they've been in charge of it. 100% that maybe their plans are now coming to fruition. They've been unchained. Maybe from Activision I, long enough. I yeah. I, my only thing that I kind of uh, wish that, I mean, maybe that they will finalize it, but like mm -hmm. the original plot, I'm at least where I left off, which was forsaken was the last time I, I played destiny. I, I guess I got tired of waiting for them to ever get around to what the hell is the darkness. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I, it's all just space magic to me. Yeah, I don't, and that's I don't kind pay of a, a whole lot of attention to what's actually going on. Space magic, which is totally and I fine. I think I look, Oh, and it absolutely, it's what you want to get out of it. You right, know what I mean? It's, right. It's, the shooting is fine. Yeah. It's fun. The setting is awesome. The, yeah. the, uh, everything feels and looks really cool. Like places get real creepy or really moody or really, you know, spacey mm -hmm. looking or like all of that stuff looks awesome. And the thing that really occurred to me was I want a destiny. That's not space fantasy. It's just freaking fantasy fantasy, but designed yeah. with the same kind of aesthetics, the same kind of fighting, but, but just give me more swords and things too. Sure. Why I not? could totally see that. I would totally love that. But anyway, I'm running out of time because we've got the Dungeons and, yeah, I was gonna say, Dungeons you're and gonna Dragons Lorecast coming up in like 10 minutes. Literal so, like, couple minutes. <laughs> yeah, I gotta I gotta get that set up. But um anyway, that's that's what I've been doing. I've got all that stuff going on. But you guys know where to get my stuff, uh ro <laughs> robotsradio.net. And um we'll see you guys around. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later. Thanks for listening to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. If you have something you'd like to contribute to the show, please reach out to us at elderscrollslorecast at gmail.com or on Twitter at ESO Lorecast. I really appreciate you listening and I'd love to hear from you soon. You've been listening to the Robots Radio Podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.